Algebra 2, the second semester final exam review, review problems. So you want to complete these problems to help you prepare for the semester 2 final exam. Attempt the problems on your own first and then check your answers on the answer key and watching this video. So know that part one of the final will cover units 4b, 5a, and 5b, and then part two covers units 7, 8, and 10. In this video, I'm going to go through the problems that review for part one. I'm going to go through these problems very quickly, so make sure that you pause the video anytime you need to to catch up and just get the explanation and the answers that you need. Let's start with Unit 4B, Operations on Functions and Composition. Number 1 says find f plus g of x and state the domain. So you can see the functions f and g above. So you're just going to do what the problem asks you to do. You're going to go get the f equation, which is 3x minus 1, and add it to negative 2x squared minus 3x. Then you'll just combine your like terms. So that will equal negative 2x squared the three x's subtract out minus one. Now for the domain, let's find the domain of the original problems. The one is a linear, three x minus one, so the domain's all real numbers, and g of x is a quadratic, and it also has a domain of all real numbers. And then our new function is a quadratic, it has a domain of all real numbers. The only thing that you're looking for is if you would have a square root um, in your function or if you would have a variable in a denominator. In that case, you would need to adjust your domain. Let's look at number two. Here you're going to subtract the functions. So it's h minus f of x. So our h function is 2 over x and we'll subtract our f function which is 3x minus 1. So we need to put that in a parentheses and then distribute that negative. So it becomes 2 over x minus 3x plus 1. Notice that we do have a variable of x in the denominator, so we need to put the domain restriction that x cannot equal 0 because we don't want to ever have the chance that we could divide by 0 because, because that's not a real number. That's undefined. Now let's look at 3 and 4. So problem 3 is what we call a composition. It's asking you to find f of g of x. The domain of our original functions are all real numbers. So f of g of x means you take the g of x function, which is negative 2x squared minus 1, and plug it into your f of x function. So instead of x, you have negative 2x squared minus 1, and then plus 2. So just combine your like terms, so we have negative 2x squared plus 1. Number 4 is a multiplication problem, because that is a closed multiplication dot. So we take f, which is x plus 2, and multiply it by g, which is negative 2x squared minus 1. Now you're just going to distribute those. So we get negative 2x cubed minus x minus 4x squared minus 2. And now let's just rearrange our terms. So negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus x minus 2. And our domain, since we don't see any square roots or variables in our denominator, can be all real numbers. Let's continue and find the inverse of each function. So we're going to just remind ourselves that f of x equals y. Now we start by interchanging our variables. So that becomes x equals negative 3y plus 4. And now let's just subtract, sorry, I mean solve for y. So we'll subtract our 4 and then divide by negative 3. We get y equals x minus 4 over negative 3, and we can leave our equation like that. And then we'll replace our y with that inverse function notation. So this is the equation that will undo our original, its inverse. Number six, let's rewrite that with a y, and now start our steps. So exchange, interchange your variables, and now solve for y. So subtract one, and then we can multiply by negative three, just to clear out that fraction. We'll distribute that negative three and get our inverse function equaling negative 3x plus 3. Number 7, we'll replace with y, interchange our variables x and y, and square both sides just to start solving for y. Now we can add the 3 over, so we get y equals x squared plus 3, and that is our inverse function. 
Now on 8, we're going to find the inverse of a formula. When we do that, we do not interchange our variables. So just start by copying down the formula and then solving for our second variable, f. So I want to divide by 5 ninths, which is the same thing as multiplying each side by 9 fifths. So we'll get 9 fifths c equals f minus 32. Now let's add 32 to both sides. So Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times Celsius plus 32. So remember, when finding the inverse of a formula, do not interchange your variables. Just solve for the other variable. Let's find an inverse for this formula for volume of a sphere. So volume equal, equals 4 thirds pi times our radius cubed. So we'll start by clearing the fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal. We can put the volume up in the numerator. Now we need to divide by pi. If you already have a fraction, that pi can just join your denominator. So we have 3 times the volume over 4 pi equals r cubed. Then let's take the cube root of each side. So radius equals the cube root of 3 times the volume divided by 4 pi. We're moving on to unit 5a now, exponentials and logs. 10. Explain how you know if an exponential equation is an example of an exponential growth, decay, or neither. And so here is the exponential form as an equation. y equals our starting value a times our base b raised to the x power. So for growth, what you're looking for is your starting value a will always be positive and your b value will be greater than 1. For decay, your starting value, again, will be positive, so a is greater than 0, but your b value will be less than 1, but still positive, so greater than 0. And finally, for an exponential equation that's neither a growth or decay, it just doesn't meet the criteria for those. Typically, you will have an a value that's negative, and in that case, we don't classify it as growth or decay, just as an exponential function. Now, number 11, we want to tell whether these functions are exponential growth, decay, or neither, and explain. So we're going to be looking at the a value, the starting amount, and then our base. So in a, um, our starting value 2 is greater than 0, our base is 4, which is greater than 1, so we have a growth situation. In b, notice our beginning amount is not positive, it's less than 0, so that doesn't meet the criteria for growth or decay, so that's a neither. For C, our beginning value is 5, which is positive. Our base is a half, which is less than 1, so it's a decay situation. And then D, our beginning value is positive 2 thirds, which is greater than 0. And our base is 3 halves, which is greater than 1, so we have a growth situation. Now number 12 asks you to identify the transformations in the exponential function. So I'm going to write the general exponential um, equation with our a, H, and K values. So remember the A value, if it's negative it reflects the graph, the H value will shift it left or right, opposite of what you would think, and the K value will shift the graph up or down. So we're comparing our A, B, and C functions to the F of X in the directions of equals 5 to the X. So notice in A, we have an A value that is negative, negative 1, so that means we have a reflection. We have an h value, which is 2, and so that's moving our graph 2 to the right, and then our number at the end is our k value, and that moves the graph 5 up. With b, we have a starting value that is 2. It's positive, and so that will be a stretch by 2. Our h value is positive 1, and it's shifting the graph to the right 1, and our k value is negative 2, it shifts the graph down 2. And then for c, our a value is a half, which is greater than 1, and it's a compress by a half. Our h is 0, so no left or right shift, and our k value is 3, so the graph is shifting up 3. Now let's graph these functions and tell whether it's exponential growth or decay. I'm going to start there. So f of x equals 4 to the x, so our starting value is actually 1 which is greater than 0, and then our base is 4, which is greater than 1, so this is growth. So let's write this just above our table. We're going to plug in the values negative 2 to positive 2, 
and I like to use decimals. So we'll get 0 0.0625, 0 0.2514, and 16. So I'm going to drop my x-axis down just to give myself more space. And then I'm going to carefully graph that curve, making sure that I do not touch or cross the x-axis. I'm going to get very close to it, but I will never the curve will never be right on the x-axis. Now 14, we have a situation of exponential decay that's been transformed because our starting amount, it's 1, it's positive. Our b value is less than 1. And so we have decay with the transformation. We have a shift of 1 to the left. Now we're going to do that shift in the table. So I'm going to set my x values from negative 2 to positive 2. And then what I did is I just took 1 half and raised it to all those powers and got my y values of 4, 2, 1, a half, and a quarter. Now let's do the shift in our x values, that shift to the left in the table. So we're subtracting 1 from each of these x values. So we'll get negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So draw your x, y axis, and then plot those points. So we'll have negative 3, 4, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 1 half, and 1.25. Notice as you look at the graph, it falls left to right. So that is a good example of exponential decay that's been transformed a little. In 15 and 16, use these interest formulas to calculate the interest in the situations given. So our first formula is when we have periodic interest, which is compounded a number of times per year. And you're going to look, be looking for keywords like daily or monthly or quarterly. Our second formula, A equals P times E to the RT, is when you see the language that a value has been co compounded continuously. So if a person invests $160 in an account that pays 7% annual interest compounded, find the balance after five years when it's compounded. So let's start with monthly. In that case, our n value will be 12. So we'll have a equals our starting amount, 160, times 1, plus our rate is a decimal, 0 0.07, over 12, raised to the 12 times 5. And remember with that decimal, you're going to always move it two places to the left from its original location. So we'll get $226.82. If you're not told, how, how to round money, always round to the second decimal place, that's cents. Quarterly, let's let n equal 4. So we'll have the same starting amount, 160 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 4 raised to the 4 times 5. So this is will be compounded a little less during the year, and so our value, our ending amount is a little less. And then finally, compounded daily. So we get 160 times base E, I am sorry, I mean 160 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 365. That's the number we use for daily. And so that will be our greatest amount just because it's compounded the most, many of the most amount of times during the year. Number 16, if $1,600 is deposited in an account in the bank, and earns 14% annual interest compounded continuously, what's the amount in the account rounded to the nearest dollar after 10 years? So now we've got that language of continuously. So we're going to use, you can call it the PERT formula. That's what it looks like. So our A will equal 1600, that's P, times base E raised to the R times T, and so that will give us about $6,488, rounded to the nearest dollar. Now 17, a car purchased new depreciates in value about 15% per year for the first 10 years of ownership. If the original price was $26,000, how much is the car worth in seven years? So we're gonna use our general exponential, um, or our general decay, exponential decay. So we'll put our starting amount in for A, 26,000 times one minus our rate 0.15 raised to seven, which is seven years. And we'll get $8,335. 
2018 in your area, milk costs $3.99 per gallon. If the price per gallon increases an average of 2.3% per year, write a function that models the increase of the pricing in years and then find the cost after five years. So now we're going to use that general exponential growth um, formula. So it's y equals a times 1 plus the rate raised to the time. So our beginning amount is 399 times 1 plus 0 0.023 raised to the x number of years. And now just putting in 5, we'll find out that in 5 years with this increase, it's $4.47 a gallon. Now make sure you have your calculator and you want to use it to approximate these values of E. So make sure you've located the E key on your calculator. That number is approximately 2.72. And we're going to round to three decimal places. So E to the fifth power, E is about three, so it's going to be, you know, fairly big. It's 148 and 413 thousandths approximately. And then here we're going to take e and raise it to the 3.2 times x power. So that's 3.2 times 3. So that's a little over the ninth power. So that will be 14,764 and 782 thousandths. Now in problems 10 through 22, we want to move into logarithms. And we're just going to practice rewriting these in exponential form. So remember from that unit that we're going to do something called the log ride. It's just a way to remember how to read a logarithm. So the first number that we encounter, that's the base. So it's 16. Swing around past the equal sign. And the next number is the exponent. So raised to the 3 fourths equals 8. We're not solving. That's a true statement. We're just rewriting the logarithm as an exponential equation. So 21, let's do that motion. So 7 to the negative 2 power equals 1 over 49. Now in number 22, I'm going to switch sides of my equation so my log's on the left. And then I'll do that swing around motion, so 2 to the x power equals 64. Now we're going to find the inverse of the log or the exponential function. So I'm going to go through these quickly. Make sure you pause the video if you need to, just to catch up and understand. So first we'll put in a y. And then we'll start by interchanging our variables x and y. Now we're going to do the steps to solve for y. So I'm adding my 2. I'm going to switch sides of the equation so my log's on the left. And now I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. So 5 to the x, it should be plus 2 actually, power equals y. So my inverse function is 5 raised to the x plus 2 power. Now let's try it again. So let's replace f of x with y, and then start by interchanging the variables, x and y. And now we're ready to solve for y just by rewriting this. So I'm going to swap sides of my equation, so my log's on the left, and then do that swing around motion. So it's 1 half to the x power equals y plus 2. We'll subtract 2, so 1 half to the x power minus 2 is our inverse function. Now notice on C we have an exponential, so we'll start it the same way. We'll replace f of x with y, and then interchange our variables x and y. And then we're going to rewrite our exponential in log form. So it's log 6, base 6 of x equals y minus 2. And now we'll just add the 2 over, so our inverse function equals log base 6 of x plus 2. Now number 7, I'm going to get a little space here. So start by replacing f of x with the y, and then interchange your variables, and we'll solve for y. So we need to move the 2 over just to isolate that exponential, and then rewrite it in log form. So log base 7 of x plus 2 equals y. And then we'll just replace that y with our inverse notation. So our inverse function equals log base 7 of x plus 2. In problems 24 and 25, we're going to expand the expressions. So I noticed that my log of 3x squared times z to the fourth, all of those values are multiplied together. So I'm going to start by expanding them using addition. So it's log 3 plus log of x squared plus log of z. 
Now my first term is finished because I just have log of a value. But my second and third terms have exponents and I can use the property of logarithms to bring those exponent out front as a multiplier. So I rewrite log 3 plus 2 log x plus 4 times log of z. And I'm done expanding now because each of my log values is a single number or variable. Now on 25, I notice that all of my terms in this natural log are being um, divided. So I'm going to start by separating those, expanding those using subtraction. So I have the natural log of 2x minus the natural log of y to the fourth. Now I can expand my first log, natural log, the 2 times x, with addition. So that becomes natural log of 2 plus the natural log of x minus, and then I can take that exponent and rewrite it as a multiplier out front. So minus 4 times the natural log of y. And I'm done expanding. I know that because each of my natural log values is a single letter, or sorry, single number or variable. Now let's condense. So we do the opposite. We put use the properties to put these expressions in just one logarithm. So on 26, I notice my multipliers out front. So I start by rewriting those as powers. So I have log base 5 of x to the third power plus log base 5 of y to the fourth power. And now I can condense that addition with multiplication. So log base 5 of x to the third times y to the fourth. We'll do the same on 27, so let's start with the multipliers, rewrite them as powers. So we have log base 3 of 32 to the 1 fifth power minus log base 3 of x squared. And now we'll put those together with subtraction because they are part with, I'm sorry, with division because they have been pulled apart with subtraction. Also, I simplified 32 to the 1 fifth power as 2. So now I have log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of x squared, and then condensing those with division, I get log base 3 of 2 over x squared. Let's find the loudness L of a sound in decibels with the intensity I of 99 watts per meter squared, where I sub 0 is equal to 10 to the negative 12. So our formula will be L equals 10 times the log of 99 over 10 to the negative 12. So you can just do that straight plug-in in your calculator, and this sound is very loud. It's 140 decibels. In 28 and 29, we're going to solve these equations and then check our solutions. So we want to start in 29 by getting t by itself. So let's divide both sides by 2. So we'll get e raised to the negative 7 hundredths t equals 4. Now I'll rewrite that in logarithm form. So it's natural log of 4 equals negative 0 0.07 times t. Then I'll divide both sides by my negative 0 0.07. And then you can just put that on your calculator. So the natural log of 4 divided by that decimal is negative 19.8. See that I put a check mark by that because I went back up to my equation and on my calculator I put in 2 times e raised to the negative 0 0.07 times negative 19.8. And I got nearly 8, so like 7.99 something. So that checks. And it's not going to be exact because I did round my answer. Now 30, with this logarithm, we just need to switch forms. So we're going to rewrite this log as an exponential. So 5 to the second power equals 3x plus 9. And now let's just do the math to solve for x. So we get 3x equals 16. Divide both sides by 3. So x equals 16 thirds. And then I can plug that in. So log base 5 of 16 thirds times 3 is 16. So plus 9. And that will be 25. So log base 5 of 25 does equal 2. So that checks. All right, two more problems, and then we're done with the review problems for part one of the final. So solving number 31, we have one log of base 10 equaling another. So in that case, we can just set their arguments or their values equal to each other. So we get 4x plus 1 equals 25. We'll do the math to solve for x. So 4x equals 24 and x equals 6. You always want to check your solutions to logarithms to make sure they work. 
and that you have positive log values. So we'll get log of 25 after we do the math, and that does equal the log of 25. Now on 32, we have two logarithms on the left side of the equal sign that have been pulled apart with addition. So we need to start by condensing those. So we can put them together with multiplication. So we have log base 6 of 6x squared equals 2. Then we'll switch forms. So 6 squared equals 6x squared, which is 36 equals 6x squared, and just solve for x. Now I am putting the plus or minus, and I'm going to check both. And so I'm checking log base 6 of 6 times that square root of 6 squared will equal 2. And so both the positive and the negative square root of 6 will work in this case. All right, that concludes the review problems for the first part of your final. The next video will cover the review problems over part 2, which is units 7 trigonometry, 8 um, rationals, and 10 statistics.